Hello. I would like to make the people aware of a very interesting concept that we just learned from the whole scandal of Pennsylvania, the college, the university. You know what we learned? We learned how powerful these schools are. Not only can they let people molest our children, not only can they whitewash everything, but they can also make the DA should disappear and he should, we should know his whereabouts. And that's not all. <laughs> the FBI didn't even bother to open a file to try to investigate where is the district attorney. That's bad news. I would urge anybody that has any affiliation with Penn State College to stop their affiliation and to stop sending them money until they clean out this whole mess. It has to be clean and also in every school the same. If you're a philanthropist, before you give money, find out what is the status of the people who are in the school. Are they reporting? Is there sexual crimes going on? <laughs> Does the DA disappear in that community? The other thing, which is the good part about what happened is that at least we're learning that the way it's been going on until now is no good. And we hope, God willing, we'll make improvements. Now, in the Jewish community, the first improvement that they made and they're trying to make, to make a law that everybody's a mandatory reporter. I want to tell the people, let's not kid ourselves. We don't, we need new laws, but we don't really need new laws before we implement the old ones. We have a law that if anybody defames victims or witnesses, they go to jail. Why is it that everybody that comes forward on a sexual abuse, which is very hard for a person to come forward, they finally take their courage and they come forward, all of a sudden they drop it. There are two reasons. 90% is because the community victimizes them. They threaten them. They do everything possible that they shouldn't succeed. 10% get paid off. But here goes the punchline. So Mr. Mandel from OL is now on television saying that we should make a law of mandatory reporting. Well, Mr. Mandel, you were a mandatory reporter all these years. Why were there no arrests? Why did everybody just get medications when after they molested a boy and they walked out through the other door to do it again? Where do you come in this bandwagon now to make new laws? We don't need new laws on mandatory reporters. We need laws not to defame witnesses and victims. And once we get that law passed, and once we see that people who are defaming will be picked up and put in jail, that's when we'll have a clean community. Now, we are citizens of the United States of America. We pay tax to the government of the United States. We're not citizens of rabbis' organizations. We're not paying tax for rabbis' organizations. We want to have nothing to do with them just if we need any religious advice. Other than that, they are corrupted. And we don't want to have anything to do with them. They should not interfere with the law system. We don't understand how the government lets them say that if anybody touches you, molests you, you come to the rabbis, Agudas Yisrael, the OU, Satmer, everybody says it publicly. What they're saying is do against the law. And nobody's being picked up. So now, let's say, for argument's sake, we pass the law, everybody's a mandatory reporter. Now starts a new question, a mandatory reporter to who? To the government or to the rabbis? So before you know it, we'll report to the rabbis again. And this is where we're wrong. We have liaisons running the police stations in the Jewish community and maybe in other communities as well. I'm not familiar. Could be all over because I see Brooklyn is going down the drain. A woman, a black woman, not a Jewish woman, gets shot. She's a mother of 12 children and she dies. And there's constantly shootings all over. So maybe the liaisons are the same in different communities as well. But I don't know. In my community, I know. And then there is Hannah White, who is the liaison of the, for the Jewish communities for Mr. Charles I's office. She's ashamed that she's working in the law system. 
What she has been doing all these years is incredible. She's been whitewashing every crime. I sit in her office and I cry that there's so many molesting going on in every mikvah, in every ritual behet, more than it happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. And all of a sudden, guess what? She says, Rabbi, I'll do anything for you. And a day later, she says, what kind of right do you have to give out my number to everybody? I said, well, you told me I couldn't. I have a witness that heard it. She's a bluffer. She lies through her teeth. She should not be in that job. And then her boss is Mr. Charles Hines. He's looking for the Jewish votes. He's the best friend with the Minka Cherebe, who is known to protect pedophiles. And he keeps on making uh, luncheons all over in Borough Park. I, I didn't know in year 2011 that there should be any votes. He makes luncheons. Mr. Ben Barber, everybody's giving him luncheons. So it's all for the money. That's what one of the people in Mishmer Satsni is safeguarding uh, 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 Tznias in our community told me. He says, you know, Mr. Charles Hines is on our payroll. Don't start with us. This is Rabbi Kraus, Joseph David Kraus. He told this to me. So if this is going to go on like this, we're just bluffing ourselves. We're making new laws. We're wasting time writing laws. And at the end of the day, it's going no place. The whole building of the district attorney can be sold to get out the U.S. government from their debt. And his office, Mr. Charles Hines' office, can be run from either Agudis Yisrael or Minka Cheruf. It'll cost him $1,000 a month to run that office. And you need no help. The job that they're doing now is unbelievable bad. So you really don't need help for this. So the idea is we don't need new laws. We can use new laws. But we need the old ones should be implemented. We need to see that at least five rabbis who are whitewashing for years all these crimes and who are threatening victims and witnesses should go to jail. When we will see that, everybody will come forward. And until then, it's a waste of your time, government. It's a waste of your money, government. It's a waste of the terror that you're putting on on the whole community. We're only being terrorized by the mob of these rabbis and of these pedophiles. Any person that comes forward, first they throw him out from school, they throw out his children from school, they throw him out from the synagogue. And you know what they also do? They throw you out from your apartment. They hack your phones. That's what they did to me all along. But they can listen to anything I have to say. There's no secrets. And this is what's happening. They call up all the carriers not to let my hotline go through. This is all against FCC laws and all different regulations. But they get away with it. What do you want more? There is a rabbi that gets understand. His name is Rabbi Be'er Lashkenazi. He lies. They catch him with a lie. The judge says, let the ju justice system take care of him. They disqualified his witness, whatever he had to say, and he's in the streets roaming. So why shouldn't any rabbi get understand to lie? In fact, every rabbi that gets understand should say, wait a minute, I have privilege of rabbi. I can lie and I won't get arrested. So I'm going to try my luck. And this is the unfortunate thing about our community with the way it's being run. So Mr. Charles Hines, I see that district attorneys like you is also available in different places of the United States, like in Pennsylvania. And I also see that if a district attorney really wants to do his job, he vanishes from under the earth. So my question to the FBI is, do you have time to listen? We have a lot to tell you. Thank you very much. And have a good day.